This is Jonah Dempsey. I'm in Ibiza at Festival Club, the graffiti ruins of a nightclub. And uh, I'm gonna continue on the series Elements of Compatibility. So I was talking about color, and I wanna talk about some of the complexities of the color level. So just like we did with tone, there's gonna be nuances, both comparing the difference between the personality and the design side, as well as the sun, earth, and the nodes. So let's just talk about the personality and the design. Uh, I'll talk about the nodes in the next video. I'm gonna to try to keep these short. Okay, when we're looking at color, we're looking at resilience. Colors one and two, low resilience, pessimistic. Colors three and four, medium resilience, uh, realistic. And colors five and six, high resilience and optimistic. Already just at this level, there's some interesting things that we can see. As I was going into in the previous video, low resilience, we have to be careful here. Low resilience almost means something like sensitivity or how impressionable, how much something gets through to you. Uh, I really do think there is a key here that the color transference is almost related to trauma in some ways. I'm not the first person to say this. There are trauma-informed human design analysts out there and other people have kind of made this connection, like you've had a lot of trauma, maybe you're, you're stuck in color transference, things like that. My only caveat is that this shows us something interesting. The lower resilience can have trauma that locks them into transference, but what is traumatic for higher resilience? It's almost like boredom is traumatic for them. It's almost like not enough happening. I, like my mom is a double high resilience person. She's guilt and direct light. So guilt, motivation, direct light, determination. When she's stuck in the same place, in the same job, in the same, she gets really bored. She has a lot of problems with boredom. And when she does something like travel in a foreign country and it's really challenging and maybe even a little bit scary, that's actually really good for her and she kind of comes to life there. A good example would be Richard Corbett, a good friend of mine. Um, medium resilience on the personality side, high resilience on the design. He went to the Amazon jungle and went on a tour. After the tour, he wasn't fully satisfied from the tour, so he went with the tour guide off into the rainforest with nothing but a knife and they hunted and ate piranhas and stuff like that. Like that was the kind of thrill he needed as a high resilience person in order to sort of get the kick that somebody who's lower resilience might, might not necessarily need. So already we're, in, we're seeing some interesting nuances of like higher resilience people are going to be sort of dulled by monotony in the same way that lower resilience people can be dulled by trauma or by what we would conventionally consider trauma. And it also just tells us that just at a basic level, we can give different kinds of advice. I mean, um, obviously all of, of human design is following your own inner authority, and yet advice is not worthless. I mean, advice is actually, knowing what kind of advice to give someone is actually very helpful, very good. I mean, I'm a fifth line, so maybe I, I especially see the value of the need to call to people, to call out to them and to give them advice. And so the kind of advice I would give to someone with lower resilience is maybe like take a lot of time after a relationship, take all the time you need. Not It's like the worst advice to give them is just like get back out there and start dating again and get back on the horse. Someone who's high resilience, I might give them the advice, challenge yourself a little more than you think you need because you actually thrive in situations of danger and you actually can handle a lot more than, than you think you can. Stuff like that. So, I mean, these are just some of the kind of generalizations. So now how do we look at the difference between personality and design? Well, as I was saying in the previous videos, not exactly the same thing, but we can pretty much say personality, mind, design, body. So what does it mean to have a low resilience mind? Um, you know, I mean, I have to be careful talking about this because I feel like I offend people. I've actually said this to someone before, like, well, you know, you're, a, you're low resilience, which means you have a pretty low tolerance for other people's points of view. And they actually got really hurt by that. And we're like, that's not true. And I'm like, well, you're kind of proving the point here because I have a point of view here that's disturbing to you and I'm kind of having to walk on eggshells around telling you this even because I don't want it to hurt you. You know, this is kind of one of the complexities, right? One of the complexities is like just because you're sensitive to things doesn't mean you're not going to be able to handle them. It doesn't mean anything bad or negative about it. It just literally means you're not really designed to battle over ideas. If you have... um fear or hope motivation, you're probably designed to, like what your outer authority will have is not necessarily the leadership of the third color or the mastery of the fourth color 
or the messenger nature of the fifth color or the Buddha nature of the sixth color, right? You're not really here to be a leader or a master or a messenger or a Buddha. You're here to be a teacher and or, and or a guru, right? And the teachers and the guru aren't necessarily here to battle. It's like, you don't go to a guru to be like, you're wrong, guru, prove to me you're right. You know what I mean? So the lower color personality isn't really here to um, have to prove itself. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about, I guess, proving is the wrong word because that has maybe more to do with the ego. I guess a defined ego teacher will have to prove that they really know what they're talking about. A defined ego guru will have to prove that they've prepared for the call and things like that. But you get my point. It's like some of us are equipped to battle it out in a huge variety of ideas and concepts and viewpoints, and some aren't. Someone like Teal Swan is not there to have a bunch of people arguing with her, disagreeing with her. It doesn't mean she has to be surrounded by yes men and women. It just means that she should more carefully curate her group. So if you have a lower color really on either the personality or the design side, you're going to need to carefully curate your group of people. Now, I think on the design side, it's more like carefully curate the people you let into your aura. So you get into some interesting mixes here. For instance, all the transitional profiles, the 1-4, the 2-5, the 3-6, and so on, up to the 6-3, they all have lowest resilience design with highest resilience personality. So how do you reconcile that? People like Steve Rhodes himself, who's the, the source of this sort of level of you know, analysis, well, how I reconcile that is that these people can handle a huge divergence of opinions, but they, they are not designed to have a bunch of unvetted people in their aura. It's like vet the people in your aura carefully, and also maybe if you have low resilience on the design side, maybe think about limiting your um, exposure physically to the world and even like photos of you and videos of you. So I'm medium resilience, I'm doing these videos. It still offends me if somebody on YouTube is like, like your haircut's stupid or I don't like your shirt, but it doesn't offend me that much. You know what I mean? I'm okay with it. It doesn't like stick that hard. They're like, oh, you got something in your teeth or like the sound of your voice is obnoxious or like you did something annoying. I'm like, okay, well that, that might be true. I'm like realistic about it. I'm like, okay, maybe I could improve there. If you have low resilience on the design side, that could really stick with you. Those nasty YouTube comments might just stick for a really long time. Now, conversely, if you have high resilience on the design side, maybe consider putting yourself out there more. I think there's high resilience people who aren't really pushing themselves and challenging themselves to the maximum, and they might, might be a little bit of a thrill. Like doing stand-up comedy, uh, going out on stage as a stand-up comedian and sort of exposing yourself to the audience that way, you know, bearing your soul um, that way. I'm not saying that high resilience people are all exhibitionistic or something like that, but just that maybe they could be. Maybe they could stand to be a little more exhibitionistic because there is a sort of adrenaline rush you get and a little bit of a, a thing where, you know, maybe that is going to give them that extra oomph that they need to combat the boredom. So, yeah, if you're high resilience on the design side, try putting yourself out there more. If you're low resilience, consider doing podcasts audio only. Consider limiting and vetting the photos of yourself that you allow out there consider um, being more careful about the people that you allow into your aura, things of that nature. Um, and then on the personality side, it has more to do with ideas, concepts, things you use your mind for, um, being criticized for your solutions. High resilience personality people thrive on being criticized for their solutions. Lower resilience uh, might not like to be criticized for their solutions as much. So just something to consider.